The US jobs report for March was just released last week. So in today's video, I'm gonna be sharing how this affects our housing market because I haven't seen any reports regarding this. So let's go ahead and dive right into the video. So I'm gonna be sharing two perspectives and this is from the National Association of Home Builders as well as the National Association of Realtors. So let's first go over uh, the National Association of Home Builders uh, take on this jobs report. Again, total non-farm payroll employment increased by 431,000 in March and the unemployment rate fell to 3.6% from 3.8%. Um, Pre-COVID, our unemployment rate in the US was approximately 3.5%. So we're just above uh, the unemployment rate uh, pre-COVID. The labor market recovery is continuing as employment in some sectors, such as professional and business services, financial activities, and retail sectors is now above pre-pandemic levels. So here's some additional data regarding the housing market. Construction industry employment, both residential and non-residential, totaled 7.6 million and has returned to its February 2020 level, pre-COVID. Residential construction employment currently exceeds its level in February 2020, while 76% of non-residential construction jobs lost in March and April of 2020 have now been recovered. So here's a graphic depiction of the unemployment in the US ever since 2000. 2001. So as you can see here in February 2020, the unemployment rate was three and a half percent. But because we had all the COVID lockdowns in uh, March and April, we reached an unemployment rate in April of 14.7 percent. Now we're down to 3.6 percent for March 2022. Meanwhile, the unemployment rate decreased by 0.2% uh, to 3.6% in March. It was 11.1% lower than its recent high of 14.7% in April 2020 and 0.1% um, higher than the rate in February 2020. In regards to residential construction employment, over the last 12 months, home builders and remodelers added 103,000 jobs on a net basis. In March, the unemployment rate for construction workers declined by 0.2% to 4.8% on a seasonally adjusted basis. All right, so that was the perspective from the National Association of Home Builders. But let's have a look at what the National Association of Realtors had to say. Is the economy on the verge of overheating, which would then require the Federal Reserve to be even more aggressive to tame rapidly rising inflation? The unemployment rate sank to 3.6% and we had a net gain of 431,000 new jobs added in March. There has been some reports that the Fed may increase the federal funds rate by 50 basis points or 0.5% in their May meeting, and we have approximately four weeks from that meeting. So right now, according to investing.com for their Fed rate monitor tool, they are forecasting by a 75% probability that they're going to be increasing the federal funds rate by 50 basis points. So what does this all mean? So according to Shiman Shah, who's a chief strategist at Principal Global Investors, for the Fed, today's report, which is the labor report from last week, gives them little consolation. With wage growth running so high, inflation fears are only heating up. A 50 basis point hike at the next meeting, which is in May, is surely secured. The only question that really remains is how many more half point moves will there be this year? And as you guys may know, the Fed increased the federal funds rate by 25 basis points in their last meeting, which was in March. Officials are now projecting at least six more rate hikes this year. However, in the weeks since then, policymakers, including Chairman Jerome Powell, have floated the possibility of a more aggressive trajectory amid concerns that the central bank waited too long to begin tightening policy. So here's what Jerome Powell had to say. If we conclude that it's appropriate to move more aggressively by raising the federal funds funds rate by more than 25 basis points at a meeting or meetings, we will do so. And if we determine that we will need to tighten beyond common measures of neutral and into a more restrictive stance, we will do that as well. So in other words, they're going to be taking the latest economic data in order to formulate what they're going to be doing at each of their meetings this year. And again, the Fed controls the federal funds rate, which is a short-term overnight rate that banks charge each other. This is not a uh, mortgage rate. It does have a loose connection with mortgage rates. So when the Fed increases the federal funds rate, it can increase mortgage interest rates indirectly. So that's one reason why a lot of people are projecting that mortgage rates are gonna be increasing uh, more this year because the Fed is going to be increasing the federal funds rate six times this year. 
The National Association of Realtors went on to say the following. Wages are now rising at a hefty 6.8%. However, workers are not better off though because inflation is at 7.9%. It says job gains are good, of course, but rising wages and prices are raising the prospect of potential stagflation. If you're not familiar with this term, here's a definition for you guys. Stagflation is when there's high inflation, high unemployment, and slow or negative real economic growth or slow GDP growth. And this is similar to the economic conditions we had in the 1970s. So here's how home buyers are being affected by these high home prices and of course, high mortgage rates. Rates are now on the verge of touching 5% for the average 30 year fixed rate mortgage. For first time home buyers, the cost of buying the same home this year compared to one just one year ago have risen by 40% from the combined impact of higher home prices and much higher mortgage rates. This will be an inevitable that will have a slowdown in home sales. Keep in mind, this is from the National Association of Realtors. They said we should keep track of days on the market, which is a time when a home seller lists their house for sale to when they accept an offer from a home buyer. If days on the market increases, that could be an indication that home buyer demand is decreasing. So anyways, they say that we should follow days on the market and also any decrease in multiple offers. Home sellers should not expect big, easy profit gains. To give you my honest opinion, I also believe we'll have a slowdown in home sales because a lot of people like myself have mortgage rates of less than 3%. So why would someone sell right now given the fact that home prices have been increasing greatly and of course mortgage rates are closer to 5%. Okay, so that portion of the video I filmed yesterday, but after watching the edited version of that video, I thought it'd be beneficial for me to provide a summary as well as some additional information about this jobs report and this housing market we have right now. So to uh, summarize, uh, 431,000 jobs were added in March. That actually missed the forecast because the street was expecting 490,000 new payrolls for March. The unemployment rate a dip to 3.6% from February's 3.8%. And that actually beat expectations. Uh, that expectations were approximately 3.7% uh, for the unemployment rate. So we uh, beat it by 0.1%. The Fed closely tracks jobless numbers and other economic indicators in order to adjust the federal funds rate. The biggest challenge right now for the, that the Fed is facing right now is of course soaring inflation, the highest since the early 1980s. Markets are now anticipating rate increases at each of the six remaining Fed meetings uh, this year, likely starting with a half a percent move in May and continuing to total 2.5 percentage points before 2020 comes to a close. If that actually happens, that could indirectly cause mortgage rates to increase further this year. Rates right now for the average 30-year fixed rate mortgage is just under 5%. But the yield on the 10-year U.S. Treasury note has been increasing lately. Uh, right now, at the time of this video, the yield is approximately 2.55%. Uh, and just one year ago, that yield was 1.6%. So the yield on the 10-year U.S. Treasury note is tied more directly to mortgage rates. So when that yield increases, so can mortgage rates. And in contrast, of course, when the yield decreases, so can mortgage rates as well, but we're not really anticipating that happening. So that is the summary of today's video. If you like today's video, then please hit the like button. I greatly appreciate that. Also consider subscribing if you haven't done so already. Also check out that link below if you want a real estate agent referral in your neck of the woods. Hope you have an awesome day and I look forward to seeing you on the next video.